Welcome back. For the third week of Fancy Mix Productions, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Peyton. Platypus are basically a walking omelet. You have, they lay eggs and they produce milk. Yeah, that is true. Yep. I saw two murder hornets in Jonesboro, Arkansas Did you? this past Saturday, I promise. You actually saw murder hornets? No, I saw two murder hornets up close. One of them was carrying a cicada. You guys know what a cicada is? The, the bug that makes that noise in the woods? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was, it was picking it up, a big cicada. It was picking it up and flying away with it. No, no lie. Uh, and I, we, I happened upon it. I was about to step on it and it flew away and dropped the cicada. Very cool. Then I was at a gender reveal. Have you ever been to a gender reveal? No, actually, I have never. Really? Yeah. As you get older, the women around you will begin to get pregnant. Um, and they will go to the doctor and find out what the gender of the baby is, and they'll have a party in which they tell everyone in a really creative way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're loads of fun. Actually, this one was a blast because everybody really wanted it to be a boy. No offense. Um, and it was a boy. Back to pregnant women though. Pregnant women who are swimming are essentially a human submarine. Now tell me how that works. Well, they're, they have a living child that doesn't get wet and can still survive underwater inside the woman. I mean, you're not wrong. I'm not often wrong. So, um, we're pretty much famous right now. Uh, we have tons and tons of letters just flowing in every single day. Yep. Um, let's take a look at some. Uh, Oh, wow. Great throw, Tyler. Tolly from New York City. Wow, Tolly, just want to say thank you for watching. Uh, we hope you're getting a lot out of this. It says, Jonathan, is that a lady jacket? <laughs> Why, Tolliver? Yes, it is. Nice catch, Peyton. Um, this one is from Hannah from um, Montana. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> it says, um, Jonathan, who's who's your best intern you've ever had? Oh, wow. Good question. You mean besides Tyler? Yeah. Probably Jacob. I'm like 40% over him or something. 20. So yeah, that 20% is better than 100% of my other interns in the past. That's cool. Today we were supposed to interview Ducky, but he is not here. So we're going to interview none other than Connor Chester Barnes. Oh, there he is. Where'd you there come he from? is. Oh. You do not want to know what's down there. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for sure. sure I Connor, thank you for coming today, uh, especially on such short notice. Yeah. Thanks for having me on such short notice. I know you're a busy guy. Yeah. I don't even want to get into it. How busy I am. Thank you for not. We don't have much time. Yeah. Are you single? And? Can you sing us a jingle? Uh, yeah, I'm single. Uh, uh -huh. actually, just kind of point on that for a second. I'm looking for a woman for some companionship, like, big time. I'm really lonely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really lonely. <laughs> I can sing many jingles. Yeah, how about it just depends on which one you, you uh, specifically you want to hear. Yeah, just probably the one you were singing earlier that was so melodic. Moving right down the highway. All right. That was really good. Man, that was the one I was gonna use to try out for American Idol, but Simon Cowell said I was too fat. <laughs> All right, so on to a more difficult question. Tell us about your faith in Jesus. I was like raised in the church, but as far as like finding it on my own and like finding out what that meant to me specifically, mm -hmm. it was uh, working at a Christian camp in Hot Springs called Brook Hill and just seeing like how Jesus moved through children and like, like you know, through the counselors and like how you could just feel his presence. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it, like working through the people there. Yeah. Um, it's just crazy. That's how I found it personally for me. But as far as, you know, keeping it up every day and just staying invested and staying dedicated, it's tough. It can be hard, but, you know, just waking up and, and the first thing that you look at instead of maybe your phone is, well, I mean, I guess you can look at your phone like for the Bible app, but just as long as you're getting in the Word, the first thing yeah. you look at when you wake up is the Word, and that's the last thing you see when you go to sleep. 
Well, thank you very much, Connor, for showing up. I guess we'll see you later. All right, see you guys. All right. Oh. Oh. Now, we're going to talk through uh, another parable in Luke chapter 15, kind of like we did last week. But it's the parable of the prodigal son. I don't know if you guys know this story. Uh, it starts in Luke 15, 11, uh, and it talks about a man who had two sons. And one son was uh, very faithful to his dad. And throughout this, the entirety of the story stays, uh, stays there with his dad. But the, the, the younger son decides he wants his share of the inheritance and all that comes with that. So his, his dad apparently is a wealthy man and, and gives half of his stuff, half of his money to this younger son because he asked for it uh, and he wants to go off and kind of make his own way and live his own life. And while he's out there, he finds that, that for one, people are very fickle because he got lots of friends and they left him when his money ran out. And life is hard uh, when you're poor and because his money ran out and he had to find a really horrible job and he was about to starve and something popped up in his mind um, and, and, and it goes like this he says in verse 17 but when he came to himself he said how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread but I perish here with hunger I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him father I have sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer to be worthy to be called your son. And so he does this, and he makes the long journey home. His dad has been waiting for him the entire time. Uh, he tells his dad this, I've sinned against you. And the father, after he hugs him and kisses him, he says to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it and let's eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Uh, the older son gets jealous and his dad was like, Why are you jealous? You've been here the whole time. Uh, your brother was gone and we thought he was dead and now he's alive. It's a beautiful story and Jesus compares this story uh, to how God looks at us. Jesus had been talking to the Pharisees and the Pharisees were watching him hang out with tax collectors so if you compared the two the two sons the one son would be the Pharisees the older that stayed the younger son uh, would be the tax collectors and in the story the Pharisees are the bad guy the the older son who stayed seems to be the bad guy in the story at the end because he doesn't want anything good for his younger brother to happen because of the sins that he had committed. And so sometimes in religion we look at people like that. We look at people as if because of the sins they've committed that they're somehow worse than us or less deserving of God's love. And that in no way is the case. And we shouldn't look at them like that. We should just, when someone comes to faith in Christ, celebrate like mm -hmm. the Father did. Celebrate like they do in heaven celebrate like the from the two parables last week that we should be extremely glad when we see someone come to faith in Christ no matter who they were or are it's just a good reminder like throughout whatever stage of your faith you're in um, how far gone you are um, you're never actually too far gone um, God is always standing here with open arms um, whenever you're coming back to him always waiting for you and we ought to view the people around us the same way. Those that we see, we know they're not believers. We know they live life the way that they shouldn't. Um, and we should pursue them the same way God does. And we should wait for them to come back expectingly. And that's all we have for today. Uh, next steps would be for you to interact with us through, through direct message or through the comments. Uh, any thoughts you have on this passage, and especially if you're that person that felt like it was too late for you to come back, to come back and, and get, make things right with God. Thank you for watching, guys. Is, is he still down there?